Today we're going to play with Doku. It is your own private hosted Heroku. You can spin this thing up at DigitalOcean and have your own Heroku experience. But instead of being backed by weird things called dinos, this thing is backed by Docker. <laughs> so basically everything you do is uh, happens in a Docker instance, but you don't need to know anything about Docker. Some knowledge, of course, helps, but uh, it handles it for you. And Doku is basically just a bunch of shell scripts. That is the entirety of the project uh, with a little Ruby thrown in. That's about as deep as I'm going to go into it. I actually wrote a post about this back in 2014 and I basically said, it's neat. Go play with it. It didn't really involve much code other than the configuration file, but I wanted to do a little bit more today because I wanted to show you how I built uh, one part of uh, my company here, Big Machine. This is the backend application. And if you have orders, uh, you can come over here and you can click on my orders and put in your email address, it looks you up, and then you can go and download your orders and so on. I needed something that I could use quickly, uh, deploy easily. And so for that, I decided to use another throwback, Padrino. But uh, I used Padrino in Ruby and I pushed it to Doku and I had so much fun doing it. I did it in a weekend and I loved it. So I'm gonna show you what that's all about today. I don't like demo, dumb demo applications, but uh, I don't have too much time to dive into a full thing today because we only have about 15, 20 minutes. But I decided that I wanted to keep track of all my favorite birds. <laughs> So this is about as dumb of a demo as I could think of. Doku installation is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use this wget command on your Linux install and it will go and grab this file that you see here, bootstrap.sh, shell script, and it'll install Doku. However, I'm gonna do something a little bit easier, but if you wanna play on AWS on a free instance or whatever, you're gonna use this command to install it DigitalOcean, however, allows you to create a pre-made droplet, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So we're all set up. I'm gonna copy the IP address and I'm gonna head over to DN Simple and set my domains. Let's see if it works. doku.bigmachine.io. Now that our domain is resolving, let's head over to doku.bigmachine.io. <laughs> That's not so good, is it? Uh, we have a 502 error, which basically means something we're trying to serve isn't working, it's crashing. Believe it or not, this isn't as bad as it looks. Uh, the first thing is Nginx is serving this, which is good. It means Nginx is installed. That's what we want to see. The bad thing is that the containers that we need to respond to this request are not spun up yet. So usually it just takes a, I don't know, two to three minutes in my experience. And then we can see if we refresh this page, uh -huh. There it is, the uh, Doku setup page. And this uh, box right here at the top, these are the SSH keys that were put in place when we installed this box. And it's basically confirming to us, are these the SSH keys that you wanna use for deployment? Now, if this is empty, if you've done the installation yourself, you just have to put the deployment SSH key here. Next, we have uh, the, the virtual host uh, setting that has to go here. Now, this is an IP address, but I want this to be the actual uh, domain that is going to be on the box, which is doku.bigmachine.io. So I'll set that here. And once I set all this, we are done. And we get redirected back over to the tutorial. So on the Doku host, we need to Doku apps create uh, Ruby Rails sample. Simple enough, Doku apps uh, create. And instead of doing Ruby Rails sample, I'm going to do the domain of the site that I wanna push. And there we are. So I can list out the applications that Doku is currently hosting by just doing apps and then list. And there we are, birds.bigmachine.io. Okay, so we've created our application, which is basically just creating a repo for me up on the Doku box. I need a Postgres database. So what I first need to do is I need to go out and I need to grab the plugin and that plugin is going to grab an image for me, Docker image of Postgres. So to create a Postgres database, we'll just say Doku Postgres create and the name of our database. Doku Postgres create, and I'm gonna call this birds. So Doku is creating a container just for our database and it's basing it off the image that we just pulled down, creating a secure connection for us and we're done. So a couple things about this that I wanted to point out. 
It separates out the configuration and the data onto the hard drive of the host box. This is critically important. You don't ever want to run a Postgres database in entirety inside of a container because if the container goes away, your data goes away. But in this case, uh, it's hosting the data outside the container. So we can add a container and have it share the data. We can do all kinds of things. But for right now, we know that our data is safe and it's sitting in the var lib doku directory. Uh, the same with the config. So if we change the config of the database, it's stored on the hard drive, not in the container. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link these two containers together doing doku postgres link. I'm going to link the database container, the database service, to our application. So to do that, I'll buy myself some space here. Postgres link.io. And there we go. We're all done. So the critical thing here is that it's giving me an environmental variable, database URL. Now the documentation, it mentions that this is the Postgres URL in all caps, but it's not. It is the database URL. So what I'll do now is I'm going to take this and I am going to come back over here to production. And instead of going to this URL here, great, we now have a production database just like that. All right, so what's the last thing that we need to do? Well, we need to create a remote and point it to our Doku installation, and then we just need to push. I just need to remote add, and I'm gonna call this Doku, but you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't matter, this is your remote name. So if you wanna call it prod, go for it. I'm gonna call it Doku uh, just because. Uh, then the next thing I need to do is I need to say doku at, and this is critical. You will get a failure if you don't do this. You have to be using the doku uh, user done. So if I do git push doku master, there we are. It's going to reach out and then a bunch of orchestration is going to go off using the post receive hook that's sitting up on the doku box. All right, we're nearing the end here where it is going to try and start our application for us and unfortunately it's going to crash um, and it's going to crash for a very good reason uh, for those of you out there who probably have saw this coming you're probably going to say wait a minute how is that going to work because you didn't set up your database and that's true i didn't uh, what i need to do is i need to go into my um into my container and i need to do the migrations on the live production box So we'll do SSH root and we're in. And now I just need to execute a command inside of my application container. But before I do that, I wanted to show you uh, some of the commands that you can execute from the docu command line. Uh, these are the default commands. So what I need to do right now is I need to run the run command. And if we take a look up here, you can see run. It runs a command in the environment of an application. So I just need to say doku run and then the name of our application, which is birds.bigmachine.io. And I'm going to run bundle exec rake db migrate. There we go. It runs in production, so we don't see any output, but it's telling us that migrate up was executed. Now I could stop here, but I also need to have an account uh, created for me. And for that, I need to run bundle exec rake db seed. And what this is going to do is it's going to execute and it's going to ask me which email and password I want to use for the administrative account. All right, rob at bigmachine.io and I'll give it a password. Now this comes again from Padrino. This isn't anything that Doku cares about. I am just executing some tasks against my, against my application. All right, well with that, I should be done now. So let's exit out of here. And I am going to, once again, try and push uh, Doku Master. Now that I've fixed all these things, I've created the database, the table is there now, the application should be able to start with no problem. We are up in the live environment. I wanna show you just a few things before we jump over and take a look at the application. And that is, we used to have a container called Gallant Stonebreaker, but Doku renamed it for us to birds.bigmachine.io.web.1. That .web.1 is important. I'll talk about that in just a bit when we talk about scaling. Uh, it created a new virtual host for us. Uh, it set up Nginx to proxy port 5000. Uh, and in addition, because we called our application uh, birds.bigmachine.io, because we named it this way, Doku understood it to be the domain that we wanted to proxy to. Uh, so now Nginx is serving this on the domain HTTP 
birds.bigmachine.io. I think that's pretty cool. Let's give it a shot and take a look. Look at that. It works. We don't really want to have a site in production without an SSL certificate, so let's take care of that. And as you can imagine, there is a Doku plugin for uh, Let's Encrypt, which is what we're going to use. And if you're not familiar with Let's Encrypt, it's free SSL from the good folks at Mozilla. Anyway, all we got to do is install it using this link right here. We'll do Doku plugin install. and making sure that we SSH in as root. We could also go in as Doku, but it just makes it easier because then I don't have to do sudo everywhere. So Doku plugin install, and then it's gonna go grab Let's Encrypt. And that's that, how fun. Okay, so how do we actually use this thing? Uh, if we come back down here, you can see all the commands that are available to us. Doku, Let's Encrypt, and then app. <laughs> that's it. So let's do Doku, Let's, .io. And, oh, can't do it, because we need an email address. Ah, uh, yes, of course. So we'll do doku config uh, set, and this is just going to be the email address uh, for our doku installation. And setting our configuration, there we go. Okay, let's try this one more time. Let's encrypt, uh, and it's, wow, it's going to grab an image. And there we are, we have our SSL certificate all set up for us. It even configured Nginx. <laughs> How neat is that? Uh, so one of the things that made this so easy was that I already had the domain set up, birds.bigmachine.io, to point to this IP address. So if you're installing Let's Encrypt on a server, as I'm doing here, um, you want to make sure that you already have the domain set up because it's going to go out and it's going to try and make sure that you own that domain. All right, let's go back to our application and I'll open up birds.bigmachine.io and if everything is done correctly, I should refresh and we're secure. Look at that. And it even uh, has a redirect in there, which I think is great. And I don't mind going in and tweaking Nginx and doing everything uh, just the way I like it. It's not that difficult, but it is really nice and very handy to have everything in a container and to have this whole deployment process behind it. SSL is working and I am extremely happy about that. The only downside is that Let's Encrypt expires every three months. <laughs> so you have to go in there and renew it. Uh, you can set up a cron job to renew it or if you're using Doku, you can just enable auto renew. <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't that neat? Okay, well, let's do it. We'll come into our host machine. I'm here, I'm SSHed in as root, and I'll just copy that in. Auto renew is set up for all apps. So this is uh, this is great. Look at 59 days, 21 hours, 15 minutes, da 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 before renewal. Lovely. Now, if you didn't want to do all your apps, uh, to set up all your apps and auto renew, you can just specify the application name but we are now covered under SSL. Right now our application is running on Webrick, which is the default application uh, server that comes with Ruby and comes with uh, Sinatra and so on. I don't want that. I'd rather have something better. And for that, I can use Puma. Um, and Puma is, well, it's just an application server for Ruby. I'm not gonna go into it for in much detail right now. Uh, but we can say gem puma, and then I have to come over here and let's exit. And I'm just going to say bundle to install puma. And we are good to go. Then I'm gonna say git commit dash am added puma. Lovely. Okay, we're almost there, but there's just a little bit more we need to do. Uh, because we wanna fully flex puma, uh, I wanna have a configuration there that makes sure if puma is set up as we want to. In other words, running in cluster mode and so on. So let's do that quickly. So because this is operating just like Heroku, in fact, it uses a lot of the same Heroku stuff, if you will, I can, in here, just set up a proc file. Proc file is the thing that uh, goes off when your Heroku app starts. Uh, and here we just have to have a single command. For the web, we want to execute Puma. We wanna make sure we pass in a config file called puma.rb. Uh, and that'll be in here in the config directory, and I'm gonna call this puma.rb. And here we go with a fairly typical Puma configuration. If you wanna know more about Puma, you can go look it up. I'm not gonna go into it here and now, but basically this dictates how many workers and threads are dedicated to your application. All right, so now we can come back over here and get push doku master. And this time when it goes up, uh, it's going to sense that proc file and it's going to execute Puma as our application uh, server as opposed to Webrick.
We just installed Puma, but how do we know if it is working? In fact, how do we know the health of our app or anything about our app in the running environment? Well, one of the things that we can do is just take a look at the logs. So all I have to do is specify that I want to take a look at the logs for a given application, and this is going to be for birds.bigmachine.io, and boom, out comes the logs. Taking a look in here, you can see, indeed, Puma is tossing out a bunch of logs that we can sift through if we want to. Um, we can, if we want to as well, put in a dash T and we can tail the log and see what's going on. So whenever anybody comes to the application, boom, we have access to the logs just like we would otherwise. One thing that's really nice about Heroku is that you can scale it in a liquid fashion just by twiddling a knob and then boom, uh, your site will scale up or down or whatever you need to do. The neat thing is you can do sort of the same thing with Doku. And to show you what I mean, uh, let's just take a look at the processes running for my application. And to do that, we just do Doku PS and the name of our application, which is birds.bigmachine.io. And up it comes. Let's shrink this so you can see it better. You can see here that Puma is indeed running uh, and we have it in cluster mode. So Puma is handling uh, the responses. So this is typically good enough. All you need for Ruby, it's um, it, it can scale pretty well. But if you want to scale it by adding more containers, you can. Here's a documentation for Doku PS, which is the process and container management. And you can go in and rebuild, as you can see, restart, and you can scale, which is really neat. So to do that, I will just come in here and say Doku PS uh, scale, and then I got to give it the name and then what I want to scale to. So right now, the web container is just one container, but I can have it be more. And ideally, you probably just want to set this to the number of CPUs on your machine. I have two CPUs. If I want to take full advantage of that, I can. And I can just set web equal to two. If I do this, it's going to release the existing application and it's going to create new containers. So I'll pause this while this is all happening. There we are. And now we have two new containers. So birds.bigmachine.io web one, and then same thing, birds.bigmachine.io web two. So let's take a look at our processes now. And you can see we have uh, two containers and running processes inside of each. And uh, they are each going to respond to our app, uh, which is nifty. So let's go back here and make sure everything's working. And it sure is and it is able to scale a little bit better and take more advantage of that super fast machine. Now obviously scaling is not quite as simplistic as I'm making it. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to add different workers in different containers. How you do it is up to you. You have to carefully measure and make sure you know what you're doing. I've spent about 20 minutes on this. I have my live site protected under HTTPS, backed by Puma, with two containers going. <laughs> uh, I have a production database, and the database is set. I've got a lot of stuff happening, but what happens if I need to change something? Specifically, what happens if I need to change that database? Do I have to go back in there and tweak things by hand? Well, not really. Um, maybe, depends on your setup. But here, I'm using SQL migrations, and one of the reasons I'm using migrations is that it's really easy to change things as you get going. So let's say I decide I want to come in here and let's just pretend this is a brand new migration. How do I get that to run uh, when I deploy the application? Well, there's a couple ways I can do it. I could just log into the machine and run the command as needed. But that leaves the potential for errors to happen because users are going to come along after you deploy. And if someone's there and the database isn't configured right, well, it's going to crash. So how do we get this to set up and run a migration before the deployment completes. Well, for that, we need a new file here, and we'll call it app.json. And this is something that Doku is going to use to understand your application when you push it. And you can add some hooks in here. Let's take a look. Here I have the name of the application, a description, and any scripts I want to have run. And I can specify that Doku needs to run a post deploy. You can also have a pre deploy if you want. Um, but this is just going to run our rake db migrate command. And that's that. Running deploy to make sure everything is working as we intend. And indeed, we have two containers. You can see here, two for the web. Coming down here, we want to make sure that um, our post deploy script is running. And you can see the message right here, attempting to run scripts. Doku post deploy, 
from app.json if defined, and it is, and you can see it running bundle exec rake db migrate in app container. Lovely. And uh, all our migrations are up to date on the server, so we just get this message here. It's been executed and it's all good. We are deployed and we are up. So now every time if we have any migrations to run, we can then run them. If we don't want to run migrations, we can remove that line from the app.json file. Our production environment is pretty dialed in. We have SSL running. The last thing we need to do here before we can go have a beer is to set up backups for our Postgres database. And what I typically will do is I will just back everything up nightly. And then maybe once a week, I'll have a cron job go off and it'll drop the, one of the backup files up at uh, Amazon S3 or somewhere else in the cloud so we can have redundancy. Well, the nice thing is this Postgres plugin, you know, it does that for you. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So all we have to do is we need to set up backup, as you can see here, and just tell it the name of the backup and the bucket to use, and we are good to go. I have this firing for my live site, and it works perfectly, and every night I have a nice new drop. So we just have to remember to set up our backup to go off to AWS. And we're all done. There is so much to show you. I could spend hours and hours doing this, but I want to clip this video right around 20 minutes, hopefully just to show you the good things that go into Doku. I invite you to go over to the documentation and have a look through here. Uh, I've only shown you uh, just a little bit, but there is so much that this project can do. It's, uh, it's really impressive. Uh, a few things I wanted to highlight before we say goodbye. The first is that uh, I wanted to show you the Doku Redis uh, plugin. I'm using that in production as well. Uh, that handles storage uh, for the web app. And you want to make sure you have um, a centralized session store if you're going to have multiple containers or even multiple processes for your web app. So I use this. It was insanely easy to set up. Plug in, install, and then you're given a Redis URL, and boom, that's it. <laughs> you're done. Uh, another interesting thing that I wanted to point out as well is this article here, Deploying Phoenix. Uh, if you're an Elixir fan, you know Phoenix deployment or Elixir deployment isn't the easiest thing in the world, but you can do it with Doku. And uh, this highlights one other thing that I brought up before, but only lightly, that you can use Heroku build packs. Um, so you can go and grab a Heroku build pack, drop it into the dot build packs directory. Doku will use it uh, to build your project. I think that's really neat. So this makes uh, deploying Elixir a little bit easier. The next thing I wanted to show you is the plugins page. There are so many plugins that you can use. Uh, if you scroll down here, you can see there's official plugins. Elasticsearch, Memcache, uh, Postgres, which we just used, Rabbit, which is neato. Uh, then you can come down here to the community plugins. People have made their own, uh, which means you can also make your own if you climb in here and figure out how these things work. So many things you can do. I wouldn't blame you right now if you're feeling a little skeptical. It seems almost too good to be true. Not only that, if you're going to base your entire deployment on this thing, is it going to stay around? Is this project healthy? Well, <laughs> if you go over to the Doku blog, it's not going to give you the best impression. Uh, they have three posts and they're a little bit sparse. Um, however, if you go over to the Doku repository and take a look at their commits, you can see that they're really actively maintaining this. They're taking pull requests. They're fixing any issues that they find. They seem rather dedicated to keeping this project around. As I said, I first wrote about this thing back in 2014. It's now 2017. They're still here and they're actively maintaining this. So I would say it's probably safe to use this thing. Well, that's it for me. My name's Rob Connery and I run a little site here called bigmachine.io. I sell fun things like the imposter's handbook where you can read about it and increase your computer science -y skills. Uh, you can also polish up on your interviewing skills. You can learn about Elixir if you want to or Firebase. And I hope to be adding more videos and books soon. Thanks again for watching.